All right, so at this point in our course, we have a lot of experience with parabolas. So what is a parabola? Remember, this is what we call the graph of a quadratic equation. For this one right here, if I'm just talking about a vertical parabola, we started with something like this. So y, or you could say f of x because this is a function. So this is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. So this form right here is very useful if you're trying to find the zeros of your quadratic function. You replace y with a zero, and then you plug in for a, b, and c using the quadratic formula. Then we moved on and we started talking about graphing parabolas. So we came up with this vertex form here. So again, this is going to be for a vertical parabola. And so you have y or f of x is equal to a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k, where h comma k is the vertex. So you could plot that point. And then you could get additional points either using graphing transformations based on y or f of x equals x squared, or you could use the step pattern with this a guy right there. So we spent a lot of time on that. And then I would just note here that this h is coming from this negative b over 2a, and this k is coming from this c minus b squared over 4a. What we're going to do in this lesson is derive another equation for a parabola based on the geometric definition of a parabola as a set of points. All right, in order to derive our equation that we need, and also to explain a few things, I'm going to show you two different images. So I'm going to start with this one, and then I'm going to go to one that has more detail, but I'm going to start with this one because it's a little bit simpler, and we have some things that we need to get through. So let me go back up. I'm just going to start by reading this definition and I'll just go back and forth. So a parabola is the set of all points in a plane equidistant. So that just means same distance from a fixed point known as the focus and a fixed line known as the directrix. The axis of symmetry. So remember, that's going to cut your parabola into two equal halves will pass through the focus and is perpendicular to the directrix. The point of intersection of the parabola with its axis of symmetry is known as its vertex. So we previously learned that. Additionally, the vertex is the midpoint of the line segment that joins the focus and the directrix on the axis of symmetry. So that is a lot to take in. So let's come down here and just label some things. So first off, we're going to have a vertical parabola that opens up and the vertex is going to be at the origin. We've said here that the axis of symmetry is x equals zero. So that's going to be this y axis right here. So again, when we talk about the axis of symmetry, this is going to cut your parabola into two equal halves. So what we said in the definition was that this guy right here, this axis of symmetry is going to pass through a fixed point known as the focus, and it's going to be perpendicular to a fixed line known as the directrix. So this point right here, which is zero comma P, that is your fixed point. So this is known as the focus. And I'll talk about what this lowercase p means in a moment. This zero comma zero, again, this is your point of intersection with the axis of symmetry in your parabola. So that is the vertex. Again, that's going to be at zero comma zero. In this specific case, as we get into harder examples, we're going to not have this at the origin. So we would just say it's at h comma k. Then this point down here is going to be zero comma negative p. So I'm going to talk more about that in a moment. But notice that we have a right angle symbol here. So that means that, again, this axis of symmetry is going to be perpendicular to this horizontal line, again, known as the directrix. And because this point on the directrix has a y coordinate of negative p, and it's a horizontal line, all the y coordinates are the same on a horizontal line. So the equation of this directrix would be y equals negative p. So this right here is called the directrix. Let me fix that. Again, we come back here and it says that the vertex is the midpoint of the line segment that joins the focus and the directrix on the axis of symmetry. So coming back, this is actually going to be quite important. If you think about this endpoint right here, and let's say this endpoint right here, well, this is going to be the midpoint. So in other words, the length of this line segment right here would be the same as the length of this line segment right here. So because in this specific case, the p value is going to be positive. Let's just label this as p and let's label this as p. In other examples, you might want to use absolute value bars because p could be negative, but in this case it's positive, so we're okay to do this. What we're going to think about p as is the directed distance from the vertex to the focus. And a lot of this lesson is just going to involve us trying to figure out what p is. And once we have it, we'll be able to get all the information we need. So in other words, if I travel up by p units to get from the vertex to the focus, that means I'm going to travel down by p units to get from the vertex to a point on the directrix. Remember this guy right here, the vertex is the midpoint of the line segment that joins the directrix to the focus on this axis of symmetry. So that means if this length is p, then this length is going to be p. So p units up to get here, then p units down to get here. All right, let's go through a little image here, and we're going to derive an equation for our parabola, and it's going to be for a vertical parabola with its vertex at the origin. You can use a similar thought process 
to derive an equation for a horizontal parabola with the vertex at the origin. And then we can extend this to where the vertex is not at the origin. So it's at some h comma k. In this particular case, just looking at what we have, first and foremost, we know that this is a vertical parabola that opens up. And again, we can see that the vertex, which I've labeled as a capital V here, that's gonna be our notation for this point. So this is the vertex. Remember in this case, the axis of symmetry is going to be the y axis or the line x equals zero. This right here is your fixed point called the focus. So I have a capital F for that. So it's going to be zero comma P. So this right here is your fixed point. Then you're gonna have this horizontal line right here, which is Y equals negative P. That is your directrix. Now, again, when you think about coming up with this, we know that if we put this point right here, we said that the vertex is the midpoint of the line segment that joins the focus to the directrix on the axis of symmetry. So in other words, let's say I make this line segment right here and I make this line segment right here. I'm just splitting it in half because this right here is the midpoint. Just to show you that, again, if the Y coordinate here is zero and the Y coordinate here is P, and again, we're above the X axis here, so I know P is positive, I can label this right here as having a length of P. So because again, this is the midpoint, I know that the length of this line segment is also going to be P. In other words, the coordinates of this point, if this is zero comma P, this is going to be zero comma negative P. And so in this specific situation, let's say we have something like a focus of zero comma three. Well, this would be a point in the directrix of zero comma negative three. So the length here would be three and the length here would be three. So in other words, I'd travel three units up to get from the vertex to the focus. And that means I would travel three units down to get from the vertex to a point on the directrix. Now, when we talk about, again, the directrix, we know that the axis of symmetry passes through the focus and again is perpendicular. So let me use my little right angle symbol here. So it's perpendicular to this directrix. So that gives me this horizontal line, which is Y equals negative P because on a horizontal line, all the Y coordinates are the same, right? So it's always going to be negative P for the Y coordinate. When we think about the other things involved here, you'll see that I have this capital P, not to be confused with this lowercase P. And this is to denote a point on this parabola. Now you can put this anywhere, we just happen to put it here. So this is capital P for point, and this is an X comma Y, just generic notation for your coordinates. So this point right here, if you go straight down to the directrix and you look at this point on the directrix, we have this as a capital D, the X coordinate is still gonna be X because again, we went straight down. So it's still the same X value. Then you have comma negative P for the Y value. And that's coming from the fact that we're on this horizontal line, which is Y equals negative P. So all the Y coordinates are going to be the same. So from the definition that we saw earlier, we would say that this distance, which we labeled as D sub one, is the same as this distance, which we labeled as D sub two. Or more formally, the distance between point P and point F, so this distance right here, is equal to the distance between point P and point D. So this distance right here. All right, so for any point P, again, this is a capital P, X comma Y on the parabola, the distance D sub one to the focus, again, capital F for that point with the coordinate zero comma P is equal to the distance D sub two to the directrix. Again, we're gonna use a capital D for that particular point. So it has the coordinates X comma negative P. So using this definition, we can find the equation of a parabola. So the distance between again, point P and point F is equal to the distance between point P and point D. All right, so using the distance formula. So from earlier in the course, the distance between two points in the coordinate plane, so we label this with the lowercase d, so this is equal to the square root of x sub two minus x sub one quantity squared plus y sub two minus y sub one quantity squared. So I'm gonna use this to calculate the distance between point P and point F. So this is your point F, it has coordinates zero comma P. This is your point P, it has coordinates x comma y. So I'm gonna label this one right here as x sub two, y sub two. And I'm gonna label this one as x sub one, y sub one. So just plugging in, you have an x sub two, which is x. So that goes right there. You have an x sub one of zero. So that goes right there. Then you have a y sub two of y. So that goes right there. And then you have a y sub one of P. So that goes right there. So that's how this gets set up. And I'm just gonna go through and simplify. So this equals the square root of. So x minus zero is just x. And if we have x squared, that's just x squared. And then plus, for this one, I would just expand it. So just use your formula. So the first guy squared is y squared. And then you have your minus two times y times p. Let's write two p y. And then plus the last guy, which is p squared. So that's gonna be us simplifying this guy right here. Now we also need the other part of this. So this is your point D with x comma negative p. And this is your point P again with x comma y. So once again, I'm gonna label this as x sub two, y sub two. And I'm gonna label this as x sub one, y sub one. So just plugging in x sub two is x. So that goes there. X sub one is also x. So that goes there. And then y sub two is y. So that goes there. And then y sub one is negative P. Be very, very careful because again, in the formula, you have minus whatever y sub one is. So here we have minus negative P. 
So when we simplify, this becomes the square root of x minus x is zero, zero squared is zero. You could write it there if you want. You could just put zero squared just for clarity. Then plus y minus the negative p is y plus p. So this is y plus p quantity squared. Now you can get rid of this. So you can just say this equals the square root of the quantity y plus p squared. Now, technically this is equal to the absolute value of y plus p. But in this specific case, what we're gonna do is end up squaring both sides. So I wouldn't even use this because you're gonna end up right back to what I'm going to do. So I would say the square root of, so this would be y squared plus two times this guy times this guy. So let's write two py, extend that a little bit. Actually, I'll just redo this. So then plus the last guy, which is p squared. Putting together what we found earlier for the distance between point P and point F and setting that equal to what we found earlier for the distance between point P and point D, you have this guy right here. And what I'm going to do to get rid of the square roots, I'm just going to square both sides. So what we're going to end up with is just the radicand here. So this is X squared plus Y squared minus 2PY plus P squared. Let me actually make that better. And this equals over here, you just have the radicand. So Y squared plus 2py plus p squared. All right, from here, it's very, very easy. We're gonna subtract y squared away from each side of the equation. So this is gonna cancel and this is gonna cancel. And then we're going to subtract p squared away from each side of the equation. So this is gonna cancel and this is gonna cancel. And then we're going to add 2py to both sides of the equation. So this is gonna cancel. Well, on the left, all you have is x squared. And that's what you want. So you have x squared is equal to, on the right, you have 2py plus 2py. So this right here is what you have left. So that's just going to be 4py. So this right here is the equation that we're looking for. So this is going to be for a vertical parabola with its vertex at the origin.